When a player starts their daily practice, I like to see a player start with an open table. And what do I mean by that? Well, the first thing is get the colours on their spots, put the reds in the open in all impotable positions. Here, I've got a red bork in the pink going into that pocket. So no, I don't want that. That cuts my options down. So I'm going to move that red out slightly out the way. Now the pink will go in all the pockets. The black will come in here. The pink will go in all these four. The blue will go as okay into the middle pockets. I've got a red here stopping the brown going into that pocket. So I'll just move it out the way. Oh dear, I've moved it. So now the yellow won't go. So no, I don't want that. I'll move it around here. Now everything will go into all the pockets. Okay, so it's a nice open table. So why do we do that? Well, the first thing is, when you wake up in the morning, you don't feel exactly the same as you did yesterday morning. You know, you might be a little bit stiffer, might have a bit of a sniffle, right? So you just want to get things working. So here, what I like to see as a player, just get down, get rid of any stiffness. I can mention Kyron Wilson, young lad who I coach. First thing he will do is a few stretching exercises every morning. Uh-huh, he'll do arm circling here. Here, as I've demonstrated on one of my other videos, he'll stretch the shoulder muscles around here. All good to get him loosened up. Then he'll start thinking, well, what am I cueing like? What does it feel like? Does my hand feel as it should? You know, have I got a tree trunk in my hand? Or is it a nice cue? Is it a nice feeling? So here, he'll just test his cueing. Yeah, well, that feels pretty good. And now he'll start. So here what we've got, as I say, an open table, nice easy red. And I'm going to play for the blue. Now, if I stay, leave my white in this area, this side of the blue, I've got plenty of options here. If I get that side of the blue, right, pop the blue and come down here for these reds. Plenty of options. All right. One thing I don't want to do is end up straight on the blue because that restricts my options. Now I'm often asked on, on the channel, how do I plan a break? Well, I've got to, you should have enough shots in your repertoire to say, all I need is a reasonable angle on this blue. And I'll start thinking about what options I've got then. Here, at the angle here, I've got plenty of options. So I've no need to plan anything drastically at this stage. So here all I'm doing is just potting the red and making sure I've got an angle. Right, I can pot the blue and come down here for these reds, plenty of options. If I stay short and stay this side of the blue, I can pot the blue and I've got options here. So no need to be too precise in this particular shot. The one thing I don't want to do is end up straight because that will cut my options down. So just very gently pop the red, ensuring I'll leave a little bit of an angle on the blue. So there we go. We left myself a nice little angle, plenty of options in this area. So here, I'm potting the blue into this area here. I've got a red into there. I've got a little bit too far, I've got this red here. In further still, I'll have that red in that corner pocket. I've got a red here, which will go into this corner pocket. Plenty of options. So I don't need to be too precise in planning my break. Not at this stage. So we'll pop the blue. And there you'll see I've left myself a nice little option on this red here. So here now, plenty of, I've got four reds here, I've even got two up there that I can play for. All I want to do is pop the red, make sure I stay this side of the blue, just slightly. That's a nice little angle, all the time. So there's my angle on the blue. So now I've got options again, I've got if I can leave my white in this area, I've got that red. I've got this red here. If I go too far, I've got that red. Plenty of options. 
just gets your cue arm going nice feel for the table and the shots you're playing so here you see I've got options again so I've got the red into the yellow pocket I've got this red into there so this shot is easier so why take the difficult one it's pointless so here just run through again making sure I've got that angle on the blue just a nice quiet little angle nothing fancy gone a little bit straight on the blue this time yeah so <laughs> you know that is a mistake but I'm not too worried about it because I've got plenty of options. I can even pinch a little bit of the pocket to get on this red. So here, a little bit of power to force the white over a little bit. All right, making no mistakes about it. Potting that last red was a slight mistake. So here now I'm on the red and I want to get in this area for one of the bulk colours so it's again it's just a little bit of stun okay so there I'm nicely on the brown from there so I can play for one of these two reds or that one into that pocket so we'll just play for that red into the green pocket don't forget your technique, be careful. So now again, play it, pop the red. And now as I've got going a bit here, I can say, start playing a bit, a few more elaborate shots, shall we say. So here I could play for a bulk colour, which would be the, the right thing to do, the simpler thing to do. But what I'm going to try and do is just come down for the blue, get my cue on going, get a feel for more of the shots that I want to play. So potting the red, coming off the cushion for the blue. So I've left myself a little angle on that blue. Okay, I've got options in this area, so if I can get the white anywhere in this area, I'll have options on the reds. No problem at all. Plenty of options there. Just getting the cue arm going, getting a feel for the table. Again, take this red run through for the blue. Stay in this side of the blue here. So I've got these two reds or even the one in bulk. Remember that angle all the time. Just a slight little angle. Here we go again. So now pop the blue into this area here for the red. See the use of the stun. Now in all these shots that I've played so far, in every one I have not used any side whatsoever don't need it I use side only when it's necessary so here we're on the blue again so now start thinking about a few of around this area for the pink and the black let's get in amongst the higher colours the higher value colours so here if I can play a a gentle cannon on this red or go towards that red I've got that red itself I've got one option here I've got this option into the center pocket plenty of options providing I'm going towards that red now, I've been a little bit careless there I've missed the cannon all right So I've left myself a tricky little red. Not a good shot at all. But here, the red's well within my ability, so I'm not really bothered. Just get on that blue again.
here I've left a little bit of an angle so come forward go forward onto the cushion come off the cushion back into this area I'll have the red there or this red here okay so the blue comes up so here a little bit awkward now I need to reuse the rest good idea to include a little bit of rest play in your your play in anyway so I've got a choice now I can screw back for the pink or I can go forward for the black whichever you want to do just give yourself the same care with the rest as everything else just get through that ball Screw back for the pink. So here I've left myself a slightly awkward angle on the pink to get on these reds. I could play the pink and come off the cushion for that red down there, but I'd have to play it with a little bit of check. So that makes the pot a little bit awkward, so why bother when I've got reds up here? It's not a crime to change your mind. So pot the pink and come up here for these reds. So there you are, got in the red into the centre pocket. So here, take the red and play for one of the bulk colours. Anywhere in this area here, no big deal. So here, take the green, come off the cushion in towards the red. Make it nice and easy. So now, once I've potted this red, the remaining reds are in this half of the table. So I don't want to be playing for a bulk colour now, I want to be getting down towards that end. So here I might as well play for the blue, all the time making sure I stay this side of the blue, because the reds are going to go down there. So find the gap between the yellow and the brown. Stay in this side of the blue. So important. So now I'm on the blue and what I could do is run through here for this red on its own into this pocket. But I'm playing for one red. I've got to be precise. I'm not that good that I could say my white ball is going to land there. You know, I'm not that good. The name is Barry Stark, not Ronnie O'Sullivan. So here, right, I pop the blue, and if I screw back, I'm trying to land it here for this red, but if I go too far, I've got two reds. So why play for one when I've got the option of playing for two? If there was three reds there, even better. Four reds, even better still. The more options you have, the better the chance of continuing the break. So here what I'm going to do is play with screw for one of these two reds. So you see now, maybe I played for this one and I've gone a little bit too far. No problem because I've got that one. You see I've given myself options. Here I've gone a little too far for this red, but I left myself the option of this one. Now all I need to do is pop this red, run through for the black. If I'm not happy with this, the angle I leave, I've got the option of the pink into the centre pocket. Now some players would prefer to play this as a stun run through. No problem with that at all, if that's your preference. For me, just here, this table is quite accurate, so no problem. Don't need top spin on. Just the natural roll of the cue ball, and it'll leave me on the black. So here we go. So quite happy with that shot. Now possibly a little straight on the black. Yeah, so 
can't get on one of these two reds without uh, risk of missing one or two. So I'll play for this red here into the center pocket. So here now what I've got is, I'll play for the pink ball. Here I need to play the red and leave myself on the pink, but in such a way that I can get down for these two reds. So if I leave the white where the red is, I've got to send the white all the way around the table. Very tricky shot. Whereas if I make sure that I'm this side of, of the, uh, the, the pink ball, then I can easily get down towards the reds. So some care about the positional element. So here, make sure the pot, get yourself queuing. And there you see, I'm this side of the, of the pink just slightly. Now, I, I really want to emphasize at this stage that every shot I have played, not on any of them, have I used any degree of side. All I've done is gone up and down that white ball top spin, stone, screw, not one element of side at all. Side complicates the issue. So here, I'm just running through on the pink. Running through, left myself a nice little angle on this red. Now here, I've got an option here of playing a stun shot or top spin and coming around the angles. To play stun, because I'm quite straight on the red, I'd really have to give it some power, which makes the pot tricky. Yeah, and also your positioning because you're using power. So I'm just using spin, top spin, no side, don't need side. So on here, just top spin through the ball. Make sure I get through the ball. Coming down for the black, just trying to make sure that I'm high on the black because this is no good being low because I'm going away from the red. I'm high on the black for this one. On this shot now, just got a delicate little screw shot. Want to leave myself an angle on the red. Here we go. Just making sure I leave an angle on the red. Remember, general rule, leave a slight angle on your ball, it gives you more positional options. So obviously now, if I was on the maximum, I'd be playing for the black. But why not the blue? The blue is closer to the yellow, so in theory it should be easier to get on the yellow. So here we go then, just some regard to the pace of the shot. Up for the blue, trying to leave a quiet little angle on it. Probably left a little bit too sharp an angle, so I've got to dig deep now. Dig deep, quiet little screw shot. Dig deep, but quietly. Managed to hold for the yellow. So here we are, just a quiet little shot now, off the cushion. Again, nice little angle I need to leave on the brown so they can get down for the blue. Just quiet little screw and stun shot. Don't be careless, remember. Concentration needed at all times. Now here I've got two options. I can come down here for the blue or I can come off the cushion for the blue. So here I'm coming off the cushion and in towards the line of the blue. Played that nicely. I 
I've got two options here. I can follow through or I can screw back. So here I'll play a quite little screw shot. Pretty, pretty much straight on the pink. Here we go. This quiet little follow through shot into the line of the black. And there we just finish the job off. So what we have done there is what we call an open table. Colours on the spot, reds all over. Nice easy shots. Now I don't think on any one of those shots have I used any side. I've gone up and down on the cue ball, yes. Top spin, stone, screw, etc. Not once have I used side, I don't believe. Right, there's no need for it on these shots. I hope the, the little commentaries that I had about playing for options as opposed to playing for one ball. Okay, when you're playing for colours, sometimes you have to play for one ball. But when you're playing for reds, invariably there are options to play for. And why play for one red? when you can have the option of playing for two and three and four. You know, don't be frightened to change your mind. You play uh, for the blue exactly and you mess it up slightly. It's not a crime to change your mind and play and go for the pink or whatever, whatever suits you. So that's an open table just to get you, you working on your game, get the cue moving, get your muscles relaxed, get a feel for what you're trying to do. Then you should move on to your your little uh, routines. You know what your strengths and what your weaknesses are. Yeah, I've I mentioned a few routines in other videos. One that I particularly like is where the use of this top cushion. You know, if you can pop the black, come off this cushion and dictate where that white's going to go. That will certainly rebuild your, your game and make sure that your highest break of 50 multiplies up to 60 and 70. Your use of this top cushion, so important aspect of the game. This is where the, the high colours are. Also, uh, you know, you might want to develop your long potting or your positional play. Just, you know what your strengths and what your weaknesses are. Maintain those strengths, but be aware of your weaknesses and work on them. Try to improve those weaknesses. And what, one element that I will mention is the rest play. It really frustrates me a little that even with top players, they never think about getting the rest, off, rest out and having a bit of practice with it. It's such an important part of the game, important part of the game. Um, it's very rare for a frame of snooker to be played and not see that rest used at least once or twice during that frame of snooker. Very rare indeed. So if you've got to use it, make sure you use it effectively. So it deserves a little bit of practice. So give it the practice it deserves. Good luck with all your practice.